Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 24th and we have a lot to talk about today. Going to go into some detail on a few features here likely to occur with this storm as well. Looking at the infrared satellite imagery currently and as promised, you can see the cold air spilling off of British Columbia and Southeast Alaska here, feeding the slow pressure system, bringing moisture back into the area. We're just now going to start some snowfall across some of the higher terrain. You can see some lightning associated with this, some thunderstorm activity across the North Puget Sound and some of the Northern Interior waters here as well towards the uh, San Juan's there and some of uh, southeast portions of Vancouver Island also and that's likely to continue here over the next couple days up and down the Washington Oregon coastline and potentially even inland a bit here but yeah you can see this next system developing cold arctic air behind it will be spilling down across the area and so we'll just go ahead and dive into things here this is that lake effect snow it's actually ocean effect snow but the cold air comes off the continent over the Pacific Ocean and back into the Pacific Northwest it's the same general principle as the lake effect snow that you hear about over the Great Lakes here and you can kind of see the trajectory of that Arctic air as it moves out over that relatively warm air and brings the moisture back into the Pacific Northwest. It destabilizes the lower levels of the atmosphere and that's why we're getting those lightning strikes associated with this system. And here we go with the updated live subscriber count. We did pass 50,000 yesterday. Thanks to all my new subscribers here. And of course, the people who have been with me since the beginning, all you members, you guys make this channel possible. And just all my daily viewers here, you can see we just hit 50,500. So yeah, fun to watch that come in there, you guys. And uh, I look forward to seeing where this channel can go on into the future. So jumping into things here, of course, the mountain snow is here, moderate to heavy snow possible. And check out Highway 2, 9720 and I-90 there. And this is two Tuesday afternoon. So it's going to be picking up as we go through the day today through Wednesday. And we're going to be looking at some interesting details here as well for eastern Washington. Even some of the lower elevations, especially Highway 2, could get some interesting snowfall amounts with some very gusty winds also. You can also see the five-day temperature outlook here. Pendleton, Oregon. You can see you've got Pendleton here. You've got Redmond, the Dalles, Tri-Cities, Walla Walla. Look at some of these temperatures. Hard freezes incoming here, folks. Check out some of these temperatures all the way down in the teens. Ellensburg likely to be about 21 degrees here towards it gets towards Saturday. Bend, Oregon, 22. Yeah, pretty chilly temperatures incoming here, folks. Yakima all the way down to 22. No doubt they're going to have the frost prevention techniques going on out there. The fans will be rolling across some of the agricultural areas out there to try to stir up that air, especially if we get some uh, nice calm nights where the temperatures really drop off in that radiational cooling. So here we go. This is for uh, uh, Missoula, Montana here. And check it out. You're looking at upper teens to low 20s. And then western Montana, some single digits are possible out there as well. So heads up for that. And of course, there can be snowy and icy roads out there all the way towards the end of the month coming up. This is for Montana as well. Big snowstorms sweeping across the area. This is a great fall. Look at Helena getting just hammered here. You're looking at some big snowfall totals for Great Falls here as well. And Bozeman getting some nice snowfall out there as well. A lot of winter storm warnings, a lot of winter storm watches out, winter weather advisories are out as well. And you can see that map here. You can see the blue is actually freeze watch. The purple is winter weather advisories. We got the winter storm warnings across some of the Cascades here also. And the blues are winter storm watches currently up. So yeah, big snowstorm region wide. Snowstorm for the higher elevations is on its way. It is just now beginning. And if you want a nice affordable home weather station to record all this crazy weather we get uh, check this one out click on that link down below to save 10 percent off a nice affordable option that does a lot of things and it does them quite well highly recommend that station so here we go the european last night's run 925 millibars about 2500 feet off the surface you can see the gusty winds we had across some of the eastern portions there eastern washington east slopes the cascades and you can clearly see that arctic air spilling off the continent as we speak and developing the system offshore you got the southerlies meeting up with some northeasterly winds can have some interesting convergent zone activity as we go through the day and afternoon today lightning strikes are possible and then you can see the system continue a pin, pinwheel down the oregon and Was washington oregon coast there and then the winds start to turn offshore here and look at eastern washington there's going to be a period where you're overrunning some moisture into these northeasterly winds the arctic front kind of setting up across eastern washington probably may include i-90 with some snowfall actually too out towards ritzville even but highway to a little bit better chance here as you go back towards wenatchee for some snow snowfall here and I'll show you that in a little bit more detail coming up in a moment and then you can see we actually Friday morning we get another little bit of a reinforcing shot of some colder air as the Fraser River outflow winds will get going again at that time more on that here in a moment 
And here we're looking at the HER, the 3KM, 12Z, lightning flash density. We've already had thunderstorms off the coastline across some of northern Washington, the interior waters, and that should continue on in through today, through to this afternoon, and on in through tomorrow, as you can see, this little pivot down the coastline. But you can't rule out thunderstorms across some of the mountain areas and even across eastern Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and through Montana as well. Pretty unstable upper levels of the atmosphere, especially with some relatively warm ocean waters there. Kind of gives a boost in the Cape, the convective available potential energy energy kind of showing the thunderstorm potential here on the NAM 3KM and you can see that cape rolling into the coastline here showing the instability and that's going to continue all the way on in through tomorrow afternoon before the system finally slides off to the east there. Now taking a look at the thunderstorm potential, a lot of times we get ignored with this kind of potential here, but they are showing it mainly across the coastline, but there is thunderstorm potential. We've already had lightning strikes in this area across northern Washington as well, so they're underdoing it a little bit there, and tomorrow they have it for the Oregon coastline. But again, this is going to be thunderstorm potential all the way inland across eastern Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and probably even western Montana as well. Now this is composite reflectivity, so this shows, you know, the green is the rain, the blue is the snow here, and as we go through today, you can see the system rolling in here is the rain starts for the lowlands snow starts for the higher elevations especially as we get rolling through the afternoon and evening coming up here and we're gonna have this upper level low spin right across the area here so interesting convergent zone activity here you could get some ice pellets some snow pellets out there some small hail lightning strikes going on and then those could occur all the way down towards the sea level portions here and then you can kind of see that snow continue on now one place I'm watching here is this this there's gonna be a bit of a surface low moving across eastern Washington look at this band of snow here could really impact impact I-90 north through Highway 2. Some very gusty winds here could be occurring as the snow is falling. Blizzard conditions are 35 miles per hour and falling snow with reduced visibility. And you could be getting close to that here across some portions of eastern Washington. Kind of this wraparound moisture bringing interesting bands of snowfall. And I'll show you more on that here in a moment. Taking a closer look at some of these wind gusts here on the NAM 3KM, let's just go ahead and put this into motion. And as we go through the afternoon and evening tonight, check out some of these gusts over the open water here. And that could be including Saturna Island up there and some of the San Juans and, of course, the higher terrain of southwest BC. But look at this, some of the gusts coming across eastern Washington as we go on in through early tomorrow morning as well. Some gusts showing up over 50 miles per hour, and that could be occurring with that snowfall. And you would get some blowing snow possibly out there as well and some reduced visibility. A blizzard is technically three hours of 35 mile per hour winds and a quarter mile or less visibility because of blowing or drifting snow and you might approach that briefly during times here if those winds do verify with falling snow so interesting stuff there now taking a look here this is highway two there's lake chelan and you're talking about wenatchee over here there's ritzville and here's moses lake right there so that's i-90 and some of the models do show some of the snowfall getting down towards i-90 but highway two kind of bullseye here on multiple models as well including mansfield farmer douglas cooley city out there Davenport and here would be Spokane here so yeah some very gusty winds with snow falling is a potential through that region Orcas Island check out some of the gusts could get up towards the mid 40s here and one of the ensembles has 50 plus there but yeah pretty breezy conditions and the worst of it looks to stay just to the north of um, the San Juans there but places like Mount Constitution are going to get downright windy here as well this is Saturna Island this is off to the northwest of the San Juan Islands and you can see some winds up towards 60 kilometers per hour you could be getting gusts up over 80 kilometers per hour here which is you know 50 plus mile per hour range so yeah some pretty gusty northeast winds kind of typical here of the Fraser River outflow winds this is Victoria International Airport. The latest control had 82 kilometers per hour, which is right around 51 miles per hour there. So yeah, interesting stuff here. Now looking at snowfall total, Snoqualmie Pass still under the gun here for some snowfall. I don't know how much of this is going to accumulate right on the roadway there, and the plow should be out. So I-90 should be doable here as we go through uh, this evening, tonight, and tomorrow morning, but still be careful traveling out there. I mean, the roadway surfaces will be warm initially, so I mean, you might get some accumulation of four or five or six inches on I-90 itself. But once you get uh, any kind of elevation outside of Snoqualmie Pass, backcountry people be very careful because you could be looking at over a foot of snowfall falling with some chilly temperatures and some gusty winds also. Mount Baker Ski Area, you can see they're calling for right around eight inches or so there. This is Whistler. Not too much for this initial shot, but you know, 
don't don't worry about it too much. You can see <laughs> fall is coming here, and Whistler does usually just quite fine here, snow uh, snowfall wise. Uh, looking at Seattle Tacoma International Airport, you can clearly see this polar lobe that's reaching down towards us. This is the cross section. This would be the surface, five thousand feet, and the top of this diagram is at ten thousand feet. Here. So kind of that polar lobe, and then the, maybe there's some return of the westerlies here as we go towards the end of the month, warming things back up, but bringing more of a storm a track back towards Pacific Northwest. Spokane, you can see these overnight lows likely to get below freezing here, hard freeze incoming, and the afternoon diurnal cycle, bit of a warm up above freezing here. We can kind of see that polar lobe aloft moving over the area. Now looking at the GFS, this is hot off the presses. Let me update this because this is running as I speak put it into motion and you can see the system, the low pressure system off the coastline there. Look at this tight gradient here between the interior of BC and that's what's feeding those Fraser River outflow winds. It's, got, it's gonna feed some of those Northeast winds across uh, uh, places like Highway 2 in Eastern Washington. So that's what's gonna cause these strong winds here. Very high pressure, a tightly packed gradient there. Low pressure system moving slowly down south across Oregon as we go on in through Thursday morning shown there. And finally the system pushes off, but then we're gonna get clipped by another little one could drop a few more inches across some of the higher terrain here but right now not looking like a big precipitation maker and as we scroll out further let's see what the gfs says about the return of the westerlies here we go through the day halloween probably warming up with some southerlies at this point and you can see we've got some interesting storm systems rolling through uh, towards the early portion of november here as well almost looks like an atmospheric river there but we're looking off into fantasy land there one thing at a time right we have plenty of time to look at that and looking at the european again you can see that tightly packed gradient here what you're looking about a 104 millibars there so you're looking at maybe 18 millibars between lake williams here and or williams lake and bellingham so that's kind of the measurement we use to drive how strong these fraser river outflow winds are going to be so yeah can you can kind of see that arctic air mass settling across british columbia and alberta and that cold air flowing out over the pacific northwest this is looking at two meter temperature anomaly here. Just gonna let this run through here. As you can see, the colder air arrived. Just a nice visual diagram of the cool down coming for much of the Intermountain West as we go on in through this week. Some pretty chilly overnight lows are incoming, even places for the Western Washington and the Willamette Valley. You know, even out of the coastline, it's gonna be pretty chilly there. And look at Montana, just gonna be locked in the ice box here as we go towards the end of the week. And yeah, some pretty chilly overnight lows here coming up. This is looking at 10,000 feet, 700 millibars, just giving you an example of what this polar lobe looks like as it reaches out towards Washington and Oregon here. And then the secondary one wants to try to clip us, but as you can see, it does not have a good overwater trajectory with that one. So it might spawn a few showers, but nothing major as of this time. Now looking at the UW model here, let's just go ahead and scroll through this all over again. You can see the the snowfall occurring tonight on through this evening. Again, the higher terrain, that's the specialty of this model showing the high resolution features here. Capitol Hill Forest, maybe some of the higher peaks there, Southwest Washington, some of the coastal range of Oregon, a little bit of snowfall. And again, it keeps showing Mount Constitution. They're getting some snowfall there for the San Juans. But look at, this is the lower elevations here in Eastern Washington. And there's gonna be that little low pressure feature moving through here. So let's see what happens. And you can see the UW model painting some impressive snows for the lower areas here of Eastern Washington off to the south east of uh, Lake Chelan and look at even places like Ritzville you're talking about maybe one to three inches here out there with some blowing gusty winds out there yeah so interesting stuff highway two under the gun there maybe even a little bit of I-90 here and especially as you go off towards the mountains of course no call me pass <clears throat> but you may run into some of that snow again as you go back in towards uh, places like Ritzville and whatnot especially if you're on highway two so now looking at 925 millibars on the European, let's see if the European agrees with the other models here. And again, as we go through the evening and afternoon, you can see this Fraser River outflow winds start, surface slow moves down the coast. We still got the southerlies going through the Puget Sound and look at the northeasterly. It's gonna have some interesting conversion zone activity. Could be kicking off a thunderstorm or two as well. Some snow pellets, some ice pellets out there could be reaching the surface also. And then eventually that surface flow starts to sag. Continue the Fraser River outflow, Okanagan River Valley Gap there. Another other terrain feature, this cold air conduit to the interior of British Columbia, and you can see those gusty northeasterly winds and the surface low right there over eastern Washington. European shows it also. So Highway 2, interesting stuff coming as we go through the day tomorrow, especially. Then you can see that low pressure center kind of kick off and move out of the area as we go through later portions of this week. And then again, why not show this? Let's look into Friday morning here. You can see again, another little reinforcing shot of Arctic air as we go through Friday morning. So we're going to keep our overnight lows, especially quite chill.
chilly as we go towards the end of the week. Six to 10 day temperature probability outlook. You can see the Pacific Northwest is blanketed here as we go towards the early portion of November. Well, we're likely to start warming up towards the end of this here. And this is a precipitation probability outlook as this cold Arctic mass comes over us for a few days. We're probably going to be below average. Eight to 14 day here. And it kind of shows that warm up starting again with the return of some of the westerlies and maybe some warmer, wetter systems into our area. And that was reflected here also in the 8 to 14 day with precipitation. So yeah, interesting stuff here. I haven't decided what I'm going to do just yet. I'm probably going out today. I may target some of that area across eastern Washington, some of the lower elevations, the gusty winds and the snow falling tomorrow morning. We'll see how that goes. I'll make my decision here shortly. Um, but uh, there's a chance I may do another video again later on today as well. And I may live stream as I go out also. So anyway, hope you guys are liking these videos. Channel's doing great. You guys all make this possible. I hope you enjoy this snow falling. You know, I know there's a lot of snowbirds are going to be up across some of the higher terrain watching the snow fly here in late October. It's always fun to see that early season snowfall come down across the area. So anyway, I hope you guys are prepared. And yeah, I'll talk to you either guys uh, today or tomorrow morning. And I hope you're having a good day.